All right, we're good to go. Yep. All right, just got off the practice field. Good day of work on Thursday. A couple more days to go here, and we'll be kicking it off. So with that, I'll open it up. Let's go first to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Steve. Um, yeah. I was curious about um, Melvin Ingram, and um, what have you learned about him from coaching him for a couple months now? I know you were familiar with him for years in the league, but are yeah. there some things maybe about him that you've learned since he's been here? He's a great teammate. I mean, you don't know those things about him when you watch him from afar. Um, he's passionate about the game of football, and he's a real intuitive football player, Adam. Like, he he gets football. When I say that, it kind of comes that When you go over and explain something to him, or we're doing it this way because of, it makes sense to him. Um, you know, some guys will – some guys you coach through the years, they'll shake their head and say that they got it, but you're not really sure if they do. Um, you know that when Melvin says, yeah, I know what you're talking about, coach, that, that he surely does. So that's, that's something I would not have known. Um, the rest of it, you see physicality and all the other things we talk about. I think we saw that on tape. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Steve. Hey, Sam. Um, you guys have obviously faced this team before, but one of the things that they do uniquely is how, how quickly they get rid of the ball. Yeah. What has to go right against you know any team that gets rid of the ball quickly just generally speaking on your guys end yeah you got to find a way to um obviously win some of those downs i mean look we're talking about a quarterback that knows exactly where to go with the football um he's got weapons out there he can get it to i mean we we try to disrupt at the line of scrimmage and hopefully that helps but he's got guys that really can beat man coverage and press um you know you'd like to think that you get, could get a couple of breakups from our D linemen, um, you know, with the hands up, we talk about that a little bit because you're right. I mean, you present something to Ben. Uh, he knows it's coming and he knows where to go with the ball. and gets it out really quick. Thanks to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, and I'll have a follow-up, uh, Brad. Coach, uh, Coach Reed said, uh, I don't know, it was yesterday or, or Monday, uh, that once you clinch the AFC West, it's kind of hard to, you know, what you're going to play for, right? Like what, what, what are you driving for that? Maybe that, you know, I don't know, the carrots taken away. I know a couple of the guys have talked about, you know, tackling be an issue uh, here the last couple of games for the defense. Is that how on your side of the ball, it kind of manifests itself that maybe I don't want to call it a letdown, but that's the easiest word yeah. for me to use. But when you, when you lose that, that thing you've been fighting for for so long that uh, defensively, one of the ways it kind of shows itself is maybe you don't tackle as well. Well, I don't know. I mean, look at I'm I'm not real smart to figure all that out, but I what you're saying, you know, kind of makes sense to everybody. I mean, I, where are you going? I I hope that wasn't the case. Um, maybe it's a missed tackle here or there, and it looks ugly. And certainly, we want to be playing better than we did the last two games. I mean, I think we'd all agree with that. And hopefully, you know, uh, knowing that what we're faced with is no margin for error. Now, uh, we talked about that on Tuesday. That was the first thing we talked about. Uh, so you prepare from now until the time you kick it off to eliminate as many mistakes as possible. And I ho I hopefully we'll do that. And then earlier this year, I know when we were talking about different personnel groupings and things, you said, listen, we're going to need everybody, right? Yeah. Like that was kind of a common theme that everyone, whether it was somebody was asking about Juan Thornhill very early in the year, you said, we're going to need everybody. Is that the mindset of, you know, now a 17 game season is a marathon here. It's loser go home. So right. was it a sprint? And does that, you know, is, is part of why we're going to need everybody is to get to this point to where you're healthy? Because I think I read one story that said you're the healthiest team in the NFL. Was that the purpose of that? And does that now change once you get to a loser go home situation? Well, I mean, I, there was something behind that. And uh, mostly, you know, that whole theme was I do believe that when most of your guys know they're going to be involved in the game and they're going to be called upon you know, the focus during the week tends to go up with everybody. I mean, let's face it, we're all human, right? If you didn't think you were going to get in the game unless somebody got hurt, you know, there's a little edge off there. So I think that helps us. Um, listen, it's all hands on deck right now. And whoever we put out there, we got to put the best 11 for that particular situation uh, and hopefully win every down. But uh, I hope we stay healthy. I mean, if that uh, stat or fact that you're talking about is true, I hope we stay that way because we're going to need everybody uh, certainly in this game, and then we'll worry about what happens after that. But it's all, all the focus is on this game. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Coach, naturally, Melvin is coming up again this week, considering he started the year with, with the Steelers. 
I was just wondering in your words, what did you think he met, meant when it, when it came to an impact on, on what Chris Jones can do and then some of the other guys on the line and, and affecting your, your line as a whole? Yeah. Um, listen, the way I remember it, um, I can't remember exactly what week we got Melvin, but I know we were headed that way with Chris going inside at that point anyway. It was a little bit more of a natural tie-in when Melvin came because he's an outside guy at end, obviously. And I've, you know, I've said this before, it's just his physicality and the passion and the angriness he brings to the game. I think our guys have fed off of that. Now, he's not the only one. Uh, other guys do the same thing and play it that way. Nick's done it and Willie's done it and Hitch has done it. Uh, and I think the more guys you can get that play that way, the better chance you have of playing good defense. So, again, I, I think we – have been off a little bit these last two games. We've got to get it back to where it was before and better than that because of what we're facing. This is a good football team. We're getting ready to play. Got four more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Rob Collins. Go to Rob. Hey, Coach Bags. yesterday Ben Roethlisberger said that they have no chance in this game. They're going to just go out there and, and have a little fun, probably a little gamesmanship on Big Ben's part. But what are the challenges of playing a team who's basically playing with house money and whom everyone outside of your building doesn't think has a chance. Yeah, I mean, we certainly don't look at it that way. Look at this 14 teams that make this tournament, per se, and any team can beat any other team. And the minute you start thinking that that's not the case, that's when you get knocked out. So our guys are taking the approach. We know this is a good football team. We know this is a good offense. We know this is a great quarterback with weapons. They can run the football. Uh, we're not taking anything for granted, um, and hopefully we'll play that way because we certainly need the top of our game defensively to help our organization get on to the next, the next week. Go next to Vahe. Go ahead, Vahe. Hey, Steve. Uh, one, one more thing about Melvin. I, when, when you use the term great teammate, I, I wonder if you might be able to point to any examples or what you mean more, more broadly than that. Uh, let's see. Um, I, now I just like the way he handles himself and operates uh, around the, whether I see him in the locker room or see him in the meeting room. I will tell you one thing when I, when I'm in the, I've said this before, when you're in front of all of them, you can see every guy. Uh, you can see if their eyes are closed, you can see if their eyes are open. He's wide eyed and tuned in as anybody that we have in that. I mean, he, he loves football. He loves to embrace it and absorb it. And, uh, I think there's a lot of value to that. Last two, Todd Palmer and Lindsay. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, kind of piggybacking off the, the the Steelers really leaning into that underdog role, but it's also potentially Ben's last game. I mean, how important is it going to be to match their intensity and, and kind of match that emotion they may have early on in this game? Yeah. Listen, I've got a, res a lot of respect for that organization. They play in the AFC North. I've been in that division before. Uh, they play quote unquote AFC North football where they, you know, they try to, to pound it at you and, um, you know, they just try to outwill you. They're a physical football team. That's what they are. We've got to match that. If you don't match that, you're in trouble against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's one thing we've talked about. And hopefully when we get to Sunday night, the guys, our guys will bring that kind of mindset. The last one to Lindsay Jones. Go ahead, Lindsay. Hey, Steve, I wanted to piggyback um, a little bit what Pete was asking you before about Chris Jones. You said you guys were trending that way to having him play a little bit more on the inside at that point. Um, was that something that you know he wanted to do at that point? And why is he just so much better rushing from the inside? Uh, I just have, but probably maybe because of his, its experience. Um, Chris was willing to do anything. I mean, look, we, we got Jay Reed and we slid Chris outside and he functioned that way, but there is, you know, more than anything, I, I tell you what, what people forget is how long and tall he is. And when you can put that inside to most of these quarterbacks, that's a little bit intimidating, or at least it, it feels that way on the outside. Sometimes if you get around or in the back of the pocket, you lose all that size. So that may be one thing. And look, he's, he's a skilled guy. We need him. We need him to play really well. Uh, and typically when he plays in well inside there, the other guys around him play a little bit better because they feed off of that. Coach, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us. Got it. All right, Brad. Well, Coach EB coming up next.